Florence might actually be my most favorite city of all. Florence is associated with the Renaissance, and there's so much history to discover there. The Church of Santa Maria del Fiore was built, but they couldn't find anyone who was able to put a dome on it. Filippo Brunelleschi was able to devise a plan to build the dome, and this largely kicked off the Renaissance. Now, the church, the baptistry, the bell tower, the dome climb, and the museum can all be accessed, but it may take about a day to cover all of it. The first thing that I really learned was that when climbing the Duomo, or dome, it's a very long, steep experience. The Duomo is actually 463 steps up. When you climb the Duomo, there's these incredible views that are happening once you get up about 200 steps. When you're there, you're up inside the top of the church and going around the perimeter interior of the church. And you're able to look up and see all of the dome art just directly in front of you. After that, you go another halfway up to get to the outside and top of the Duomo. On that section, the stairs get kind of steep pretty narrow, and at the very end there's a bit of a ladder situation to get all the way up to the top. It can be a tricky climb if you're not prepared for it. When you're at the very top, you step outside, and there's 360 degree views of all of Florence. How do you feel about having made it? I'm really proud of myself. Yeah? I worked really hard to be able to do this. Another major event in the Renaissance was a public art competition for the development of the baptistry doors. The winner of the competition was Ghiberti, with bronze doors called the Gates of Paradise. Replicas can be seen outside the baptistry, but the original bronze doors are located inside of the museum. The Duomo's museum also has quite a lot of Donatello's and Michelangelo's there to view. It also had a lot of exhibits that were exact replicas for kids to be able to touch, which was a lot of fun. I also learned a lot at the Uffizi. The paintings there by Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Botticelli had been things I'd always wanted to see. I learned that the Uffizi is a lot bigger than that though. It's very, very long and it's probably worth a whole day of adventuring. Even in the off season, the Uffizi was very crowded. People were bumping and touching, so there wasn't much room for personal space. And it's probably a really good idea to get a good sense of these paintings before you go to the Uffizi since your ability to get really close up to them and totally absorb them fresh and new it might be somewhat limited given the number of people there. After the Uffizi, I walked to the Ponte Vecchio, which is a bridge known for its gold and silver artisans. It's a great place for photos and fun to walk through. The next thing I learned was about the Academia, which is where Michelangelo's David is located. He is absolutely incredible. It's spellbinding whenever you actually see him. The thing I discovered is that Michelangelo really lives up to the hype. In Florence, I took a pizza and gelato making class and got some hands-on experience with the cuisine which was a lot of fun. It was great getting directions on how to make the pizza correctly and to use the local ingredients and also to have somebody else clean up the mess for me. This is our room at the Grand Hotel Baglioni. Start out with an entryway. And you open into this gorgeous giant room. I loved my hotel in Florence, which was called the Hotel Baglioni, and it had a lot of old world charm. Gorgeous desk. Big bed. Extra beds all made up. Oh, look at this beautiful window. It had dark furniture and high vaulted wood paneled ceilings. Oh, okay. It also came with a big bathtub, which was big enough for at least two people. Wow. As a plus size woman, it was very easy to relax and feel very comfortable there. The hotel had great service. It was very clean. The water pressure was really good and the water temperature was hot enough. It also was only 10 minutes walk away from the Duomo. So a really great location, very close to everything. For breakfast, it had a pretty good buffet. The only negative that I can say about the hotel is that the shower curtains were plastic and they didn't really cover the area well enough to keep the water inside, so the floor of the bathroom got pretty wet. It was definitely worth the work to lose the 10 pounds to earn Florence, and I'm not sure how any other city's going to beat it. I'm looking forward to my next trip, wherever that might be.